in D.C., what you see is they think they haven't suffered enough. The, the D.C. City Council, Clay, it's even though the crime rate is going up. Now, so it's really just a question of degree, right? But even in a high crime environment, true believer libs feel like we're going to get through this. We just haven't we just haven't gotten to the other side of this process yet. I mean, there are clearly lunatics. Hey, everybody, we're excited for election night. As many of you are as well, we're going to be having an incredible party in Nashville, and we want you to be able to hang out with us as a part of our VIP family. So all you got to do is sign up, become a Clay and Buck VIP, and you can stream and join us. Some of your favorite people are going to be there, too. It's going to be an election night bonanza. We'll see you then. Hillary Clinton is all of a sudden... You know, I'm getting, I'm starting to notice Hillary Clinton's popping up a lot for somebody who's supposed to be going for uh, walks in the woods, drinking wine, hanging with the grandkids, doing yoga, etc. Seeing her used as a surrogate a lot here for a, and there's a Biden administration that we know is a little rocky. I'm just saying, interesting stuff. But here she is making this argument. That you're hearing from a lot of Democrats right now. I, I understand this. Do not forget, they gaslit you and said that crime was not higher, crime was not worse. And they did that for 18 solid months of the Biden administration. We're really almost now two years, more than 18 months. But in the last couple of months, they've realized, uh-oh, we've got a problem. So here is uh, Hillary telling everybody that the states with the highest crime levels are run by Republicans. Play it. Look, I mean, crime should be a concern. I mean, I don't, I don't care where it happens or what it is. I, I want people to be safe. That's not the Republicans' argument, because, of course, if you look at real crime statistics, which they're not interested in examining, uh, the states with the highest crime levels are states run by Republicans. That's just a fact. We saw that, you know, very clearly in the recent debate in Oklahoma for the governorship when the Democratic candidate said, wait a minute, you know, the crime rate in Oklahoma is higher than it is in New York, and nobody wanted to believe that. Mm -hmm. Uh, They don't want to solve a problem, whether it's crime, inflation, or anything else. They just want an issue. You know, when given a chance to govern, they don't want the responsibility. Okay, this is total crap, and Clay and I have explained, I mean, the the basic version of this, and there's something else I want to get to on the crime front, Clay, but I just wanted to to hand this to you, because you've been making this argument very loudly and it's important for him to know the state level actually isn't really where you can do that much about crime. Lee Zeldin's going to fire a bad prosecutor in New York City. There are things that if he wins, which I say he will, but there are things that can be done. But really what we're talking about when we're discussing defund the police, when we're discussing changing procedures, bad prosecutors, it is cities And when you look at the cities driving crime, you look at St. Louis, you look at New Orleans, you look at Baltimore, you look at these cities, Chicago, with out-of-control crime, they are all, all Democrat-controlled cities, and in many cases have been for 50 years, 70 years. Decades, Buck, and that's what I was going to hit with. They're trying to say, oh, it's these red states. Here's the 25 counties with the most homicides over the last three, four years. All right, really quickly, St. Louis, Baltimore, New Orleans, uh, Shelby County, which is Memphis, Philadelphia County, obviously, Birmingham, which is Jefferson, D.C., Washington, D.C., Kansas City, which is Jackson, Missouri, uh, Indianapolis, Wayne County, which is Detroit, Milwaukee County, which is obviously Milwaukee, um, Cuyahoga County, which is Cleveland, Cook County, which is Chicago, Fulton County, which is Atlanta, Franklin County, which is Columbus, Harris County, which is Houston, Dallas County, which is obviously in Texas, uh, San Antonio, Bayhar County, I believe, Miami-Dade, San Bernardino, all of these places. I could keep running down LA, Phoenix, Fort Worth, Vegas. That's the top 25 according to this list. You know what all 25 of those have in common? They all have Democrat leaders And they're overwhelmingly blue cities that have the crime rate. So when Hillary says, oh, the states are Republican states. No, no, no. The cities are blue cities, which is where the crime is coming from. I'm sure the governors of all those states would love to clean up that crime. They can't do that much because Democrats keep winning power. And in case anyone's thinking, and this is where I wanted to to point this out. I think it's so important. 
And it's why you need to get out there. It's why everyone needs to mobilize to vote and to really send this message, as well as take power out. This isn't just about the optics. This is take power out of the hands of these lunatics, of these left-wing, socialist, soft-on-crime Democrats, everywhere you can. You might be thinking to yourself, okay, okay, they, you know, Clay, they realize they made a mistake. The libs have, uh, we've had enough um, excess or additional to the expected year robberies, murders, rapes, assaults, they are getting the picture. The libs live enough in reality that they're going to change. Let me explain to you really quickly, everyone, that is not true. Kathy Hochul sending additional police into the subway system is a last-minute ploy to save her job. They have not repudiated the left-wing and mass incarceration, defund police, Uh, social justice first ideology at all and i give you right now in washington dc clay which is 95 percent democrat might even be higher might even be more like 97 now but a 95 percent democrat enclave the dc criminal code is going through the dc city council and has been uh uh, uh, through a revamp if you will a, a a massive rewrite and does anyone want to guess D.C., which has high crime rate, high violent crime rate, high crime rate, been getting worse in recent years. Clay, they are eliminating most mandatory sentences for crimes. They're allowing for jury trials for all misdemeanor crimes, pretty much. They're reducing maximum penalties for carjackings and robberies. They're actually going in the direction of making it softer on crime in a city already with a massive crime problem. My friends, they're doing this in D.C. right now. You know why? Because D.C. isn't a place where Republicans are on the verge of taking power. They have not changed their minds, Clay. They have not decided they were wrong. And the justification for why they're doing it in D.C. is because too many black criminals are being arrested. That's that's the legitimate justification. They're saying... This is equity-based. So as crime is skyrocketing, they are looking around in Washington, D.C., a city that both you and I have lived in at different points of our life. We talked earlier about Union Station and how many different parts of D.C. that had become fabulous are now decrepit under Democrat rule. And you look at what's going on there, and I said this earlier today on Fox News with Harris Faulkner, uh, Buck, and I've said it on this show for a long time. Being concerned that you're too tough on crime is a luxury of a low crime environment. Well, you Sitting say that, but that's saying, true for that's true to an extent. That's yeah. true for people who are trying to keep their jobs, right? In DC, what you see is they think they haven't suffered enough. The the DC City Council clay, it's even though the crime rate is going up. Now, so it's really just a question of degree, right? But even in a high crime environment, true believer libs feel like we're going to get through this. We just haven't we just haven't gotten to the other side of this process yet. I mean, there are clearly lunatics. And I would also point out, you know, how we, we when we talked about this horrific case in New York, this woman who was who was strangled, raped and robbed in one of the most, um, you know, high profile jogger, safe, wealthy. Yes, this jogger in New York City. What did I say? I said, I have a feeling, I have a feeling this guy's been arrested a lot of times. Turns out they've got the guy in custody already. They just broke this story an hour ago. How many times has this guy been arrested, Clay? Take a guess. Eight. Eighteen. Yeah. He's been arrested 18 times. How does someone get arrested 18 times for a whole range of serious crimes and not spend any? How is this guy? He's a homeless man. Oh, I'm sorry. Also wanted on two previous sex crimes. So so the libs, MSNBC, they go on TV. Oh, we're tough on crime, too. Oh, we we care about public safety, too. And yet I can sit here and make the prediction and you nod your head and you all in on it, too, because we know this horrific crime just happened. The system run entirely by Democrats in New York City failed this woman, failed her family, failed her community. It. 18 times, this guy, you know, once you get to arrest number five, I think we got a problem. I think it's time to send, once you get to arrest number three, I think it's time somebody needs to spend some real time away from the public and no longer a threat to them. As you well know, too, I bet, 
that that guy's rap sheet will start off with relatively inconsequential, relatively, crimes and continue to grow in severity as often is the case. In other words, it's very rare that someone commits an incredibly violent crime with otherwise a sterling record of behavior prior to that incident. Just to be clear, he's been a really upstanding, before this, a, a law-abiding citizen since Thursday last week when he was arrested for using stolen credit cards. This guy just goes around breaking the law yeah. all the time. He's been arrested 18 times. I assure you he has broken the law hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. And, and now a and now woman's life is, is forever altered in a deeply negative way. She'll deal with that trauma because the libs are cowards, because they buy into this racial panic around the issue of mass incarceration. And people have had enough. They've had enough. And you know what? It's not just suburban voters who are breaking. I think this is important for Republicans. A lot of black, white, Asian, and Hispanic people have had enough. This is the the ultimate, I would say, uh, fallacy of the argument of soft on crime that a lot of left-wingers buy into. You know who wants criminals put behind bars? People who live in violent in inner-city neighborhoods because it's a tiny pinprick of people that make their homes unsafe. And the last thing they want is for those violent perpetrators to be running amok without restraint. They want more cops. And they want violent predators off the streets. This is yeah, something we, that's we, universal. We stand with the over 99% of people in the city of New York and over 99% of the black and Hispanic community of New York who don't commit any crimes and just want to live their lives in peace and safety. And whatever the numbers are of who's getting arrested for, co for committing crimes, irrelevant. Keep people safe. Keep everybody yes. safe. Keep the 99.9% .9 safe. And that should be the first goal. And this is what it's all about now. I mean, but I, I bring up the D.C. thing, Clay, just because the libs aren't all. They're not all willing to. They're pretending right now. To, you know, Kathy Hochul is pretending she got the message. The mayor of New York is an idiot. He hasn't changed. He hasn't made things better. He hasn't brought the crime level down. Many women out there, particularly white women, who were supportive of Joe Biden, Buck I believe we talked about and uh, dissected effectively Joe Biden managed to get himself elected because of suburban women who walked away from Donald Trump and endorsed Joe Biden. Well, a lot of those moms, a lot of those grandmas, a lot of those moms in the suburbs are fired up now over Joe Biden's failures. And a Wall Street Journal poll recently said there'd been a 26 point swing from Democrats plus 11 to Republicans plus 15. I think I'm getting that right. Well, the ladies on The View discussed that incident. And Sonny Hostin, who is regularly featured on this program as alongside of Joy Behar, one of the dumbest people who speaks on television on a daily basis, decided to compare women, white women in particular, who are voting for Republicans to cockroaches. Listen. But what's also surprising to me is the abortion issue. Um, I read a, a poll just yesterday that white Republican suburban women are now going to vote Republican. Why? It's almost like roaches voting for raid. Ew. First of all, she is honestly, she is so dumb. I mean, this show, it does such a disservice even to the Democrats who watch it because th these are, they're not good representatives. They're, they're not the, the best and most thoughtful representatives of the Democrats, very wrong ideology. I mean, they're dumb. They're dumb for Democrat pundits on that show, too. And, I, you know, I, I, I don't just say that. to. Well, it's just true. It's obvious. Yeah. No, I, but I just want everybody out there to think about this. Any other television commentator who compared a race and a gender, she said white women are like roaches, immediately fired. Can you imagine, Buck, if somebody was on and they said, oh, you know how those Asian women are cockroaches? Uh, they're done, right? Black women, Hispanic women, white women are cockroaches because they're voting for Republicans. And most people are just going to shrug their shoulders and say whatever. And look, I'm not cancel culture, but when you compare a race and a gender to cockroaches, um, well, this is it, it's kind of a ridiculous you know, you uh, have analogy here. America First uh, Legal, which is uh, Steve Miller's group,
I believe yeah. they've put out these these ads that are just making a very straightforward case. Hey, guys, all this anti-white stuff about fighting and combating whiteness and all, this is racism. You actually Super need to stop racist. this. Yeah. This is not okay. A- anti-white sentiment is not okay. I don't care what kind of hierarchical understanding of, of intersectionality the left thinks we all live in. It's not okay. We don't judge people by their skin color. Full stop. 